Hello, hello, how are you? Tell me all the things. I am so excited to tell you about this because this is one of my favorite things to talk about, um, specifically at the moment. And in spring last year, a few weeks after the pandemic had like properly set in, I ran a group program for filmmakers who wanted to use the unexpected downtime to jumpstart their careers as writers, directors, producers, or combinations of those. And even though we're now hopefully <laughs> at the tail end of the pandemic, there's still uh, downtime, there is still a chance to get ahead. So when we're fully back to normal and we have the green light to safely, you know, get back into production, you'll be prepped and ready to go. So I'm going to run you through the four ways you can make the pandemic work for you so you can get ahead and get ready for the production boom that will come as soon as it is safe to. Uh, if we've not met before, I'm Charlotte. I am a film producer and the filmmaker's career coach. I help you build a successful career as an indie filmmaker so you can make the films you want, whenever you want, with the people that you want, and get paid for your time and talent. So if you're ready to get ahead and make the rest of the pandemic work for you, close your tabs, mute your phone. I've not muted my phone, so I've got a feeling my mum is going to phone me during this, but we'll go with it. So we'll dive in. There are four key areas to focus on and we want to make sure that all of them are operating at 100% in order for you to make the most of the pandemic and be ahead of 90% of other filmmakers when things really get moving again. So the first is most filmmakers favorite. It is development. It's the fun bit, right? You know, generating ideas, developing projects, creating stories. It's, it's our favorite bit. But there is a right way and a wrong way to do development, especially if you are a one woman show and having to wear all the hats. I know I've been there. And the most important part of development is making sure that you can do it consistently. So consistently generating new ideas, consistently getting them into pitch ready state, consistently creating those irresistible pitch materials. And this doesn't have to take up your entire day or your entire week. It, in fact, it shouldn't. But that dreamy, you know, film career that you're really working towards relies on one key pillar, which is you being an ideas machine. So it's actually why the pandemic has been a bit of a blessing in disguise in some ways for filmmakers, because we all suddenly have relatively uninterrupted time at the moment to build out our development slates and, you know, create a bank of pitch ready projects that are ready to go as soon as the industry is. So you want at least eight, 10 projects on your development slate that are pitch ready. And this does not mean having scripts for all of them or even just first drafts for all of them or any of them sometimes. It just means having enough information to that project to be able to hold a three to four minute conversation about it. Plus some pitch materials like treatments and pitch decks just so you have them ready to go if someone asks to see them. So when I'm working with my clients on their development slates, I like to get up to 15 or 20 projects. Eight to 10 is like a pretty healthy starting number. So the reason is because you never know what's going to land in the industry at any given moment. You also don't know who you're gonna end up meeting or talking to or what they're gonna be interested in. So you need a pretty broad variety of projects to make sure that you're not losing any opportunities. And you're one of the first filmmakers who is back in production as soon as it is totally safe to do so. You, we all know that feeling, right, of when you're talking to someone about a project that they've asked about and you can kind of tell they've got like glazed, glazed eyes as soon as you finish or sometimes even just halfway through the log line. That's why you want to have a pretty broad variety and a pretty healthy looking development slate so that if it's not for them, you can immediately switch to another project and you're not going to be losing that opportunity. You're not going to be boring that person and you won't get to the end of that conversation thinking, mm, OK, I guess nothing's going to happen with that then, which is not like the best feeling. Right. So when I say pretty broad variety, that doesn't have to be, you know, one drama, one comedy, one horror and so on. You know, if you're a drama writer through and through, then it's actually a lot better to stick with that. Your variety will come from the ideas themselves and the scale of each project. So by scale, we're talking about the size of the project, huge period dramas, for example, 
pretty big in terms of scale. Whereas smaller, like kitchen sink style projects with a smaller cast, smaller number of locations, that kind of thing, much smaller scale. And I always advocate for having a healthy mix of scales in your development slate. So if you've got five ideas that are all huge scale projects, then focus on creating some new smaller scale ones to even it out. And again, it's because you never know what's going to land in the industry. You never know who you're going to be talking to. If you're talking to a producer who is all about huge scale projects, I'm sort of unhelpfully one of them. Um, it means that as soon as someone starts talking to me about like kitchen sink style drama and two actors in one location, it's often not really for me. It, it doesn't mean that there's a problem with the idea or the script or the story or anything like that. It's just not a me project, you know? And sometimes there are definitely exceptions to that rule, but if you're talking to someone and you get the sense that it's just not for them, then switching to a different scale that they seem more interested in is a really good way to make the most of that opportunity and not lose that conversation or that pitch. So take a look at your slate. I keep mine in a Google Doc and on a Trello board as well, but you can keep yours any way you like. If it's looking a little bit sparse, then focusing on creating new projects and getting them all to a pitch ready state will be the first thing that you can do to really make the pandemic work for you. Because as soon as we get going, people are ready to get things into production they are going to want a whole bank of ideas to pull from and you don't want to be one of the ones that's only got two or three projects and you find like that you're getting left behind because it's not that there's anything wrong with those projects they're just not hitting the right you know at the right moment so building out your slate is going to be one of the biggest things you can do and I know that one of the biggest struggles actually for filmmakers is finding the time to work on your own projects. I mean, if you don't have that problem, then I'm, I'm very jealous of you. Um, but using this sort of hybrid pandemic time is going to be a complete blessing in disguise because as soon as things again start getting going again and getting back into production, you're suddenly going to find you have a lot less time for creating new ideas or creating pitch materials or writing or any of the things that you do in development. So making use of this time whilst we still have it, it's one of the, it's one of the silver linings, I guess. So the second area to focus on is marketing. And I know, I know, I know, filmmakers all seem to be allergic to marketing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but marketing isn't often discussed for indie filmmakers and it definitely isn't taught anywhere really. So it's easy to shy away from it. So I hate to burst the bubble, but the filmmakers with their own audiences are the ones skipping the queue and going straight to the top of the list. This is because producers, investors, companies, all the other great people that get films into production and completed have to know the answer to one crucial question, which is who's going to watch it? And before anyone starts blaming social media or anything like that, this is the way the industry's always operated. It's why they used to exclusively use A-list talent only because they knew that would draw the audience in. It's why studios love existing IP from books or films that they're remaking because it comes with a guaranteed audience. It's why you suddenly see a huge gl glut, I guess, of like musical biopics because they do it once and it's hugely successful and everyone's like, cool, this is what's working at the moment. Let's focus on that. It's why huge name directors can make almost anything that they want because they come with their own audience. So social media is actually making it a lot easier for indie filmmakers to tip the scales. For the first time ever, you have the power to create your own audience from scratch without spending you know, 10 years struggling to get two feature films made that slowly builds your audience a little bit each time. So using this downtime to get clear on who your audience is will be vital if you've not done it before. And as the industry is struggling to recover from a loss of over 2 billion, I think now, they really can't afford to take any chances. They're only gonna be focusing on guaranteed projects. So starting to build your own audience now will put you ahead of everyone else. The easiest way to do it is on Instagram or any social media platform of your choice, but this doesn't mean you have to start, you know, sharing selfies on a daily basis. First and foremost, your audience will be interested in what you make specifically, you know, your films. So let that be your foundation. And from there, you just need to start sharing content consistently. That's the real key to audience growth and engagement. So 
polishing up your development slate with eight to 10 projects that are ready to pitch, ready to go, and starting to build your own engaged audience are the first two ways that you can make the pandemic really work for you. The third way is networking, which is still alive and well, despite everyone sort of being at home. The great thing about the pandemic is how it put everyone, and I do mean everyone, on a level playing field. It's suddenly so much easier to get someone to take a meeting with you, if only so they can avoid like homeschooling their kids for an hour. So getting to know other filmmakers on a personal level is the best way of networking because you create a really strong connection outside of any project. Meaning that if something goes wrong or it doesn't work out with that project, you still have that contact regardless of what happened with the film. So the trick is to be strategic with who you're connecting with. So don't book in like 10 Zoom calls this week if they're not the right people for you to be talking to at the moment. So if you're a writer, for example, then connecting with directors and producers will be first on your list. So directors, connecting with producers and writers. You know, writers, again, as an example, don't spend hours chatting to other writers because although they're great and they're really good connections to have, they're not the important pieces in your personal career puzzle. So they're not gonna be the ones to pick up your project or help you get it into production. Focus more on producers and directors. And like everything else, it's really the consistency that matters with this. If you're networking or strategic networking, if it's a new step for you, then set yourself the goal of making one new connection a week. And I have a template for exactly to put in your emails for new contacts. So all you have to do is fill in the blanks and really take the stress out of like, what do I say? So you can download it at charlotteproducers.com forward slash network. So development marketing, building that audience, and then networking. Those are the three ways you're gonna make pandemic work for you. And the last is to know or to create your personal project process. So knowing the exact process that you go through for all of your projects is going to be a lifesaver when there's a production boom and you have three things going on at once. I made a video about project processes recently and how to create your own as well. So. I'll tag that here and you can go through that one. Um, but those are the four ways that you are going to make the pandemic work for you, however long it goes on for, maybe a week, maybe a month, who knows. But if you still have that downtime, if you're still wondering how you can really get ahead and make sure that you are fully prepped for when good things start happening again, if you don't have those four up and running, start with those four and start getting them going consistently. So I am really excited to see which one you go for, which one or you know, multiple ones you get started with. I'm so excited to see you get ahead. And if you're wanting to level up with these so you can make the films that you want whenever you want, apply for one of my career assessment calls that I run free with filmmakers who are ready to get to that next level in their career. You can go to charlotteproducers.com forward slash call to fill out the application form and we'll be in touch within 48 hours. Uh, these calls are application only, as spots are limited, and they are only for filmmakers who are done with where they're currently at and really ready to move up. So it means that during our 45 minutes together, we're going to get into your filmmaker calling, make sure you're leveraging that strength, not wearing all the hats. It was a personal problem for me. If it's a personal problem for you, we're going to get into it. We're going to fix it. And we're also going to get to the root cause of your stuckness, whatever it is holding you back. Get clear on your big dream for the next 12 months and you'll get the exact strategy to get you to that goal without relying on luck or the industry or any random changes, any more random pandemics that just arrive as they do. Um, but all of that we're going to go through during our 45 minutes together. So don't forget to tell me which one of these you're going to try. I would love to know and I will see you on Zoom.